Dear participants, I'm Sena Ardıçlı from Bursa Uludağ University, Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, Department of Genetics. Today I'm going to give a presentation entitled Bacteriological Investigation and the Evolution of the Effect of Milking Parlor Control on Other Health and Prophylaxis in Terms of Subclinical Mastitis in Dairy Goats. First of all, I want to share my general outlines of the presentation. In introduction section, I will give a brief information on subclinical mastitis and the effects of this disease on at the heart level and the pathogens that cause mastitis. In material and methods, animal material, diagnosis methods, and the experimental design will be presented. And I will continue my presentation with results and discussion and finish my presentation with the conclusions and the suggestions. Mastitis is an infection of other tissue that leads clinical to subclinical inflammation and transitory to permanent blocking of milk ducts. Control of mastitis in dairy animals is aided by an understanding of the pathogens involved, the rate of new intramammary infection, the spontaneous cure rate, and the source of infection. The disease can be defined as clinical or subclinical. Two definitions of Subclinical mastitis are used in the literature. Some authors use somatic cell counts as an indicator of intramammary infection, whereas others used a positive bacteriological culture in the absence of clinical symptoms. The proportion of other halves with subclinical mastitis in goats in different countries ranges from 35 to 70%. The intramammary administration of antibiotics used on farms has increased as it was proved to be effective for treating subclinical mastitis in small ruminants. It is important to note that the widespread use of antibiotics on dairy farms could lead to the selection and to the emergence of antibiotic-resistant bacterial strains. The subclinical mastitis has also adverse effects on hygienic quality and physiochemical properties of milk. The subclinical mastitis is characterized by having no visible signs either in the other or in the milk, but the milk production decreases. The bacterial pathogens such as Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus agalaxia, and other environmental pathogens have been reported as the cause of mastitis and subclinical mastitis in dairy goats. Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and coagulas negative Staphylococcus are reported as the most prevalent pathogens in subclinical mastitis of goats. It has been estimated that subclinical mastitis is more prevalent in goats as compared to cattle. Moreover, difference in causative agents responsible for subclinical mastitis in different animal species have also been reported. Remarkably, subclinical mastitis causes significant economic loss in dairy farms. In dairy goats, milk is relatively expensive compared to cattle. To minimize the economic loss, it is necessary to pay attention to approaches that include some prophylactic and control strategies before, during, and after milking. Therefore, this study was aimed to evaluate the impact of milking parlor management and hygiene on subclinical mastitis prophylaxis in dairy goats. 200 milking sun and coats were used in the study, and the farm is located in the South Marmara region of Turkey. Lactation rank is 2-3 in the farm. Due to the pH alterations and low milk uh, yield uh, based on herd encountered in the farm, California mastitis test examination was performed. The CMT is a fast, simple, and relatively inexpensive method that detects somatic cell counts with high accuracy in mixed or individual milk samples. The higher the number of leukocytes in the milk, the higher the gel structure formed. According to this grading system, one, two, and three positive reactions indicate the relevant other lobe is infected. If it is suspicious, it suggests that there may be an infection in the relevant other or other lobes, and only four other lobes have a suspicious reaction, there is no infection. If one or both other lobes give a suspicious reaction, this is considered as an infection. Negative results are interpreted as no infection. 
But here it's important to note that physiologically goat milk contains a larger number of somatic cells as compared to cows and sheep. Milk from normal quarters generally ranges of 600,000 to 800,000 somatic cells per milliliter. Goats that were found as 3 plus in CMT examination were evaluated as subclinical mastitis positive. Accordingly, a total of 43 goats and 58 other lobes were evaluated as CMT positive. A loop flow of milk sample was straked on 5% sheep blood agar. The plates were incubated at 37 Celsius degrees aerobically for 24 to 48 hours. Colonies were examined for grain staining. All isolates were processed by the BD Phoenix 100 for genus and species identification. Statistical analysis was performed according to the procedure of Fisher's exact test using SPSS software. Results revealed that two samples had mixed bacterial infections, while 40 were monobacterial infections. Staphylococcus species, which is an indicator of lack of hygiene in general, grave predominantly in cultures made from positive cases. Culture results revealed that 42 out of 58 milk samples were found to be positive, while no growth was observed in the cultures of 16 samples. Accordingly, the predominant isolated bacteria were Kaugla's negative Staphylococcus species with an isolation rate of 88.64%, uh, followed by Staphylococcus aureus with an isolation rate of 4.55%. The other isolated bacteria were Streptococcus pyogenes, Mythis, and Acidominimus with an isolation rate of 2.27% uh, each. Overall, 39 different species of Coagula's negative Staphylococcus were identified as 29 for Epidermidis, 5 for Lanthus, uh, 2 for Equorum, and 2 for Hominis, and 1 for Capitis. In the CMT examination performed one, one month after the operating milking parlor inspection and the implementation of appropriate hygiene procedures, all affected other lobes of 27 of 43 goats were healed and the CMT score was read as a negative value between 0 and uh, 2 plus in 58 other lobes. Consequently, milking parlor management and hygiene significantly affect health and prophylaxis in terms of both the other and the number of recovered animals. As conclusions, Milking parlor hygiene applications are ignored from time to time or not given sufficient importance in dairy goat farms. However, these applications can provide significant economic gains by directly reducing the extra treatment costs and indirectly increasing milk yield and quality. Moreover, as shown in the present study, they significantly affect other health and subclinical prophylaxis. Thank you for listening to me.